Hi, I'm Young. Look at that ocean. I love being on a liveaboard, and of course, I take Mavic Air with me. So I want to share with you what to do and what not to do when you're flying a drone on a boat. Now let's get straight into the point. Point number one: have enough space for landing. Actually, landing is the really difficult part, especially when you're in a boat like what where I was in. Lots of ropes and just not enough space. Too many people on the boat. I've had really bad landing experience, which I'm gonna show you right now. First time I tried to land, I thought I got it right, but the boat was moving because of the waves, and then bash, it just hit one of the fabric. I'll show you how. After hitting the fabric, one of the front arms got folded, and then it actually went to the rim of the boat. And after like five seconds, I realized what had happened. If the drone had landed like I don't know, like an inch away from the rim. Then it would have been just bye bye to the sea. So after first attempt, I got scared to try it again. But then we went to Manta Point, and come on, you have to take drone up there. I attempted again, and the landing had the similar issues. The boat was moving because of the waves. Even though I thought I got everything right, I politely asked people to move so that I can land the drone. Once it actually came to the landing site. It hit something because the boat was moving, <gasps> and then it flipped quite slowly, so it it didn't actually quite stop the motor of the propeller. Once it hit the floor upside down, the motor was just keep on going, damaging the surface of the propeller. So I had to actually pick it up myself. A little bit dangerous, but I picked it up myself and flipped it fast so that the motor can be stopped. When I'm taking off, I actually use my palm, which I'm not supposed to for Mavic Air, but it works totally fine. And point number two: Tell someone that you're flying the drone. You should actually ask the captain for permission whether you can fly, because you also want to determine that the boat will be sort of like stationary. That makes your life so much easier when you're landing, a lot safer too. Even though I actually told the manager and also the captain, like the, I think there was a miscommunication and so on, so they actually started like started the engine and started like sailing. That gave me so much scare. So I, at some point, I actually asked them to stop the boat for like two, three minutes. And since the boat may be drifting, Komodo National Park in Indonesia has a lot of current. So you may want to set your home return point to where the remote control is. I haven't figured it out before going on the trip. So I didn't figure it out, but let me show you how now. And always check for the wind condition. I sort of raise my arm like this, you know, like a golfer. <laughs> I've been very lucky in Komodo. It hasn't been terribly windy, so it was fine, which was a little bit different from my experience in Sabang Beach in the Philippines. And since drone is becoming very popular these days, you want to probably make sure to know like who has the drone on the boat as well. When I was doing the Hong Kong drone shot, I had some problem with another friend who had Mavic Air. Basically, when we were both connected, at some point like my drone got disconnected. Luckily, I wasn't on the water, but with that experience, I realized that having two Mavic Airs or more in proximity can get really confusing. Actually, some people had Mavic Air, and I asked them if we can alternate flying, and they were totally fine with it. And after seeing how I land and how difficult it was to fly and land the drone, they just asked for my footage and they didn't even take out their drone. As long as you're willing to share your drone footage with the others, that's a great way to make friends at Liverpool. I would recommend you guys to charge everything before going on Liverpool because it's possible that you might not use your drone so many times. So actually three batteries in the fly mode combo, maybe not. With my bow, which is very, very unusual and very, very unsafe, power socket has some problem. It was giving out too much electricity and it really screwed up my underwater camera, luckily temporarily, I think. Depending on the condition, you might not have proper charging facility, and some of the charging facility may be faulty and may damage your electricity. 
and this is a um, non-drone related point but just put on a lot of sun cream when I tried testing the ND filters oh I got like back burn just being out in the sun for like five minutes so make sure you are sort of like well protected for flying the drone outdoor and this is now the very last point when you're flying drone on liverboard you need to do it at your own risk accept the risk accept the consequences that may come with the risk I took that chance especially after first time I I really found it challenging to fly the drone on that boat but second time when we went to Manta Point I really wanted to get that Manta Manta shot and also show you guys that great Manta shot as well so I actually sort of accepted some of the risks involved with flying the drone out in the ocean on a boat hope you guys find this video useful please give the like to the video and subscribe to my channel thank you bye